floor to the distinguished representative of the Russian Federation. Thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished colleagues, the discussion that we have been compelled to participate in together today is probably one of the most ungainly episodes in the proceedings of the General Assembly since, para, uh, since Agenda Item 65 was imposed upon it. With each iteration of this discussion, the authority of our shared body is irrevocably damaged. Uh, at times, perhaps those who allege that the UN is often divorced from reality, if they may be right at times, today is indeed the most egregious example of this divorce from reality. We have our Ukrainian colleagues to thank for this. They have uh, 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 relentlessly uh, claimed and exploited for seven years now the putative role of so victims of so-called uh, Russian aggression for the Ukrainian authorities. Uh, such uh, baseless allegations are increasingly a question of their very survival. And in this, as we can all t see today, this is being eager, this is something which where they are eagerly helped in by our Western colleagues who have sponsored that very same Maidan overthrow, the Maidan coup. The fact that uh, some continue to believe in the tale of Russian aggression in order for the tale of Russian aggression to be continued to believe, be believed in is something which they have a mutual interest in. For if the truth were to be uncovered, there would be a need to explain to the international community uh, inconvenient realities. For example, who orchestrated the provocation in Maidan in February 2014, which claimed the lives of more than 100 individuals, uh, where more and more testimony and evidence is surfacing that the protesters were fired upon from positions under the control of the opposition. Who was behind the arson of the trade union building in Odessa in May 2014, which claimed the lives of more than 40 individuals? Uh, the Ukrainian justice system is not too keen to investigate these two incidents. They understand the price of the inevitable exposure of the provocative and criminal nature of the events in the Maidan and the actions of its ringleaders and sponsors. And of course, there are other uh, inconvenient realities as well. Who sanctioned the direct explicit threats and acts of violence targeting residents of Crimea and the decision against Russian language status, which was convenient for all Ukrainians. And these uh, provoked the referendum on the status of Crimea and uh, its subsequent reunification of the peninsula with the Russian Federation. This was fully in line with the right of peoples to self-determination as set out in the UN Charter. Who unleashed the civil war against the Russian language population in eastern Ukraine, dropping bombs and shells on the residents of the Donbass and Lugansk instead of engaging in dialogue with them on the future of the country? The future of the country, which was planned uh, by leaders of Maidan without consulting with the population to change fundamentally in irrevocably. The answers to these and other questions will be forthcoming sooner or later. This will have to be done above all with respect to the residents of Ukraine. We understand that this is both difficult and unpleasant. It is far easier to continue to mislead everyone, as was recently done zealously by the Ukrainian Deputy Prime Minister Alexei Reznikov, who once again alleged, contrary to facts, contrary to data from the OSCE Special Monitoring Mission, that allegedly in Donbass there were 7,000 Russian troops present. It is far easier to disseminate falsehoods about the horrors uh, of the alleged occupation of Crimea than to acknowledge the truth and to uh, show these lies. This is done every year. The truth is uncovered by millions of Ukrainians who continue to enjoy their vacations on the peninsula and leave positive reviews in social networks. My German colleague, once again, uh, lamented uh, that we are not allowing anyone access to, to the peninsula. Uh, ask your fellow compatriots, including from the Bundestag, who frequently travel to Crimea, uh, about that. Uh, we invited you, as did uh, Crimeans, to Crimea personally. Uh, to visit the area. Perhaps you simply refrained and you are intimating that we should purchase your tickets. 
then uh, stated explicitly why equivocate. Incidentally, whereas today, uh, perhaps if uh, if it were to be justified to speak of certain occupation, that would be the occupation of normal Ukraine by Maidan Ukraine, which was uh, a country that was an open, friendly country for us with shared values and shared ideals. Uh, the Maidan madness and geopolitical considerations of our Western colleagues have transformed it into a haven of nationalist and anti Russia adherence. And today, the residents of Donbass have resisted, have been resisting this occupation, thinking of their children's future. So when you speak of occupiers in the Donbass, consider that other occupants other than the uh, residents of Donbass and Lugansk do not exist, simply because they live there and they continue to live there. That is the truth, inconvenient as it may be. And the truth also lies in the fact that uh, today's uh, discussion has a is a, a practically is indeed de genuinely damaging for residents in Damascus on the eve of uh, today's meeting, as is uh, the case with the evening of other uh, meetings. The Ukrainian armed forces have intensified their shelling of the suburbs of Donetsk. A part of this was uh, carried out from uh, using weaponry that had been explicitly prohibited under the Minsk agreements. Uh, a uh, young resident of Alexandrovka has uh, been seriously wounded, and a number of residential homes were damaged. Despite the increase in the shelling, uh, the residents of Donbass have become accustomed to the endless shelling by the Ukrainian army. Indeed, the Kiev authorities and their Western sponsors do not need the truth. And for this very reason, they are sparing no effort to obstruct the participation of residents of Crimea and Donbass in UN-sponsored events. And however, uh, it is becoming increasingly difficult for them to conceal this inconvenient truth. In May of 2020, an ARIA format uh, meeting of the Security Council was held on the situation in Crimea, which gave an opportunity for residents of the peninsula to uh, comment on the conjectures of politicians who have long lost any ties uh, to reality. And a similar meeting uh, was held where they were not granted access. In December of last year, uh, the Security Council convey, uh, was able able to convey the position of, uh, of residents of Donbass and L L Lugansk. The ARIA of formula meeting was ignored not just by Ukrainian uh, delegation, but also by countries who claim to be mediators in the settlement f to the conflict within Ukraine. Thereby, uh, Paris and Berlin essentially cast aside their masks, and they clearly demonstrated whose side they indeed are on. Distinguished colleagues, despite the virulent opposition of our Western colleagues, we have and shall continue to convey the truth about the situation in East Ukraine, and we will continue to dispel insinuations about the situation in Russian Crimea. The main content of the meetings I mentioned has been circulated by the Russian Federation as, a, as a official Security Council documents. Yesterday, we all also circulated comments of Donetsk and Lugansk about uh, its participants' statements during the September, during the 11 February Security Council meeting on the situation vis-a-vis -vis implementation of the Minsk package of measures, a meeting that was convened at Russia's initiative. From this document, it is clear that Kiev's uh, commitment to the Minsk agreements is merely a myth that is attractive and convenient to the West, a myth that is divorced from reality. Moreover, uh, the Ukrainian leadership's approach to the Minsk agreements has been borne out by the statements of Ukrainian officials. I would mention the illuminating words of President Zelensky. I quote, the Minsk agreements are necessary not for settlement, but rather for the maintenance of sanctions against Russia, unquote. And he is parroted by other senior officials. The same Mr. Reznikov is of the view that these uh, agreements expired on 31 December 2015 and has called for Russia to be convinced to consent to their amendment. And the head of the Ukrainian delegation in the Minsk contact group, Leonid Kravchuk, has called the Minsk agreements, I quote, a millstone on the neck of Ukraine, unquote. This is all for domestic consumption in Ukraine. 
at the international level, all of them, without blinking an eye, with uh, the indulgence of our Western colleagues, have alleged that Ukraine has been complying with the Minsk agreements, and they state that Russia is not complying with them, and yet there is no mention of the Russian Federation in the agreements, but this is not unsettling to anyone. Today, the Ukrainian representative twice quoted the U.S. President, Mr. Truman, not once did he mention his country's obligations under the Minsk agreements. It is telling, including if we consider who is calling the shots at present in Ukraine. Ladies and gentlemen, such, uh, such a games, uh, a machinations by Kiev and its Western colleagues could have very adverse consequences for Ukraine. We have warned about this on a number of occasions. The end goal of implementation of the Minsk agreements, as is known, is to bring Donbass back into Ukraine. However, the prerequisite for that is direct dialogue between Kiev and Donetsk and Lugansk with the mediation of the OSCE and the Russian Federation and establishment alongside them of special status for the Donetsk and Lugansk oblasts. Ukrainian has, Ukraine has rejected this such dialogue from the very outset and at the same time the residential uh, areas continue to be shelled, the sub acts of uh, sabotage and subversion continue to be carried out, economic and other infrastructure is blockaded. What do you think? Under these uh, circumstances, do the residents of the Donetsk and Lugansk want to return to Ukraine as soon as possible, especially given that the original sin of the Maidan uh, representatives is an unwillingness to heed the views of the Russian language populations. And not only has this not been expiated, but has been the situation has been worsened. Uh, and at the same time, a law has been enacted on the Ukrainian language, according to which uh, Russian language is prohibited. Uh, Nazi henchmen are being whitewashed and glorified, and these are individuals who helped the fascists, including in the mass extermination of Jews, and this has reached unprecedented levels of freedom of speech and media freedoms are being trampled upon, not to mention Russian television channels, which have long been prohibited in Ukraine. And just a few weeks ago, Mr. Zelensky shut down three opposition Ukrainian television channels, even though recently he swore that this would not be done. And this is largely a consequence of the fact that Western sponsors of Kiev in geopolitical in its geopolitical ambitions from their outset gave him a carte blanche to engage in any acts and excesses. And uh, to this we would add the horrific, devastating economic situation in the country, which is worsened with each passing day due to the severing of normal, friendly, and mutually beneficial economic relations with the Russian Federation. A question arises, what is the purpose? What is the incentive for Donetsk and Lugansk to return to this kind of Ukraine, a Ukraine which every day misleads the international community, which spreads misinformation about them, which calls them occupiers on their own native land? Ukraine conducting such events as today's, which merely alienate prospects uh, of uh, resolving the problems that are of concern to them. The resolution to problems in East Ukraine, it falls to Ukraine itself alone. The sooner uh, this is understood in Kiev, the better. Kiev, in the past, uh, through cruel and criminal acts, uh, alienated Crimea and Donbass. The Crimean people have made their choice and they cannot be returned. The residents of Donbass and Lugansk for the moment are keeping the door open. And for this door not to be shut, there's a need for Ukraine as soon as possible to end its geopolitical machinations and to finally undertake to implement the Minsk agreements paragraph by paragraph as they were drafted and as they were signed. There is no other way with an optimistic outcome for Ukraine. For this reason, it is exceedingly important to support the Minsk agreements and to emphasize the inadmissibility of their revision. Distinguished colleagues, to conclude, I wish to note the following. Despite all of the non-constructive acts by Ukraine, the representatives of Donbass, on the contrary, are doing everything possible to make headway towards a peaceful settlement to the conflict plaguing the east of that country. Specifically, in April and May, they plan to organize in Minsk. Of course, 
if this is convenient to the hospitable Belarusian hosts, an academic conference to discuss the course of implementation of the Minsk agreements. If this is to be ignored by the Kiev authorities and their sponsors, and this is uh, what is suggested when one analyzes their conduct of late, it would be another missed opportunity for the long-awaited peace to be ushered in in East Ukraine. Thank you for your attention. I thank the distinguished representative of the Russian Federation. I now give the floor to 